what's up guys welcome to vintage genetics where it is all about classic bodybuilding and today me kane and my dad are training chest right here at fox gym it is a newly opened gym in the netherlands around 30 minutes uh drive from my own gym so i just wanted to check it out because this gym named fox gym has already had an establishment in Rotterdam, but that is over an hour away from me. I've been there once, but I never trained there, so I just took the opportunity to train there when it wasn't actually an open day for uh, a charity for animals. So every bodybuilder there was able to donate a few euros to the charity, and that's always a very good sign. But anyway, we are training chess right here, starting out with the chess press. And honestly, uh, the chest press right here feels kind of strange. It's like the leverage is uh, making it very difficult to put a lot of weight on this machine because I used to do an incline uh, chest press with four plates on each side, at least uh, six to eight reps. And that was years ago in a different gym. Here, this already started to feel uh, very difficult. It is a regular chest press, but as you can see, it's going upwards just a little bit. So kind of in between a regular chest press and an incline chest press. But the most important thing is that you shouldn't focus on the weight. Just go as heavy as possible with correct form and mind muscle connection. That's at least what I'm always striving for. So what I want to strive for in any chest press machine or any machine in general is that I want to have a full stretch and a full contraction during the rep. So even though I couldn't go that heavy on this one compared, you know, at least uh, absolute number wise, but probably the chest experienced a weight that's much higher than this absolute number of weight suggests. So this feels very heavy right now. So I'm going all the way down, stretching the chest and then going all the way up, contracting the chest. And that's one benefit of a chest press compared to, for example, a bench press, is that if you look at the handles, they go inwards. And when they go inwards, it allows you to contract the chest much better. Some people complain when they're doing the bench press that they don't actually feel the chest. And they don't feel the chest because the only part that you can really feel there is the stretch and some people don't even go all the way down so that's when the bench press becomes kind of a dangerous exercise because some people they don't have chest growth from the bench press so they think oh i have to go heavier and heavier while their form is lacking on that exercise so if you do the bench press uh, maximize the stretch so have a you know a wide grip so it doesn't agitate your shoulder so not too wide but if you have a wide grip it will stretch your your uh, chest out much better but that's for the bench press for this one for the chest press you want to go all the way down as well but also make sure you can get a proper contraction so the seat here i put it up quite high so that my elbows are nice and low taking out the shoulders from the movement and really putting the chest in the movement and the set i just did there was a lighter set to really get the blood flowing the pump going for the rest of the workout now this is an incline hoist chest press and you can see that hoist machines really use your body weight as well in the movement so it feels on the other hand very natural to do so because this i i move my own body for example on dips which you will see later uh the same way that these machines force my body to move so the moment that you press upwards on this machine your body weight your body basically goes backwards allowing you to contract the chest easier and when you go down your body uh, comes forward allowing you to stretch the chest easier as well so that makes the whole movement much easier and you don't really have to focus as much on trying to maximize the stretch or contraction because if you accomplish a full range of motion and you know you will automatically feel that stretch and that contraction but this machine is a little bit too small for us so it's more for people a uh, six foot and below i think and uh, me and my brother are both six to a little uh, 
uh, taller than 6'2", so as you can see it's kind of difficult to get in and out of this machine. And also if you go too low, the handles literally touch the front delts. But having said that, I can really contract the chest very hard, especially the upper chest, which obviously an inclined press is meant for. So this inclined chest press really does hit the upper chest really well. Uh, it feels very natural to do this movement. No impingements, n nothing that the shoulder uh, is feeling in terms of pain. Uh, I just feel the chest working and the way that my body is moving. Uh, feels very natural to me, so it really enhances a regular chest press, but uh, you know, if it were up to me, they could have made this machine a little bit bigger for taller people as well, so it would be more convenient to actually do this machine. And here I'm uh, next to Bibark, one of the people who organizes events like this. As you can see, he's wearing a suit, uh, kind of symbolizing the charity of these animals so that's uh, you know very good also or different charities will be coming up and i'll of course be uh there to support the cause so next seven incline hoist chest press uh in my opinion these hoist machines are quite light and you will see that on the next exercise as well you can do an enormous amount of weight contrary to the machine i did before this is an incline machine and I'm already doing more weight than on a regular chest press. So logically that doesn't make sense because for almost everybody an incline movement is more difficult to do than a straight or decline chest movement. So the hoist machines do make it a lot easier for you to complete a full rep with a heavier weight. And guys, that's also something to take notice of. I always write down the weights that I use, but they don't really represent anything you need to take seriously. It only is stated there so you can see in what way I'm progressing each set. So even though some people say, oh, I can leg press 600 kilos. Well, I cannot leg press 600 kilos on my leg press. Even though you are just a beginner and I've been doing it for 12 years, that's just an example. So the weight on machines really don't matter because for everybody it feels different. Machines have different leverages. They don't feel the same. For some machines, 100 kilo feels impossible. While on other machines, the exact same movement, 200 kilos is pretty easy. So only use weights as something to take seriously when someone uses dumbbells or a barbell. So true free weights is where it's all about. And by the way, the incredibly tall and big guy who helped me get these handles up is called The Mountain. Uh, the Balkan Mountain, as you guys know, Thor Bjornsson is officially the mountain, so this guy calls himself the Balkan Mountain, and uh, he's a pretty awesome guy, also a strong man, uh, I've talked to him on a regular basis, but uh, he was here actually to do the bench press challenge, which he also won, uh, having to bench press 60 kilos for as many times as possible, and the winner then gets a free supplement or something, but it's all about the publicity that these events then get to get more people to events like this. Unfortunately, I couldn't do the challenge because I already trained chest and I didn't know what time the challenge would be, otherwise I of course would have joined. And this is another example of such a hoist machine and this is a very good example of something you should do when the machine itself doesn't do it. And what I mean is this machine forces my body uh, in, in a position during the rep. So if you look closely, when I go upwards with my arms, my body goes forward. That's basically um, opposing movements allowing my chest to stretch deeper. So when I go down, I contract the chest as my body goes backwards, making the contraction easier as well. So this is what you want to do if you have a, uh, a dip machine at your gym and it doesn't move like this, it's just a stationary seat, then do the same as it's happening here. So the moment that you go upwards, rock your body forward a little bit, you will feel the stretch in your chest. And when you go downwards, rock your body 
backwards allowing you to more easily contract the chest but at all times try to keep your shoulder blades together so you don't actually uh, target those front delts when trying to contract the chest always keep your uh, back a little bit arched your shoulder blades contracted just pulling them together allowing you to only really target the chest and not the front delts as that's not what you want to target <laughs> and this is pretty funny as you can see 240 kilos and that weight it doesn't even make sense because if it really was that heavy how would i be able to stay seated so i'm pushing down on 240 kilos i weigh around 125 on 26 kilos right now so i wouldn't be able to press it down and still stay seated so this uh because it was fully loaded with weights i just did as many reps as possible and i hit just above 20 reps so uh, you know, you should always go to failure in my opinion, whether it's around 8 reps, 12 reps, 15 reps or 20 reps. Just make sure you have a few rep ranges in the workout that you go to failure with. Try to remember the weight you went to failure with and try to beat the amount of reps you did last time in order to progress your strength. And when your strength is improving as a bodybuilder and your nutrition is on point, you will build muscle regardless, no matter what. Alright, the next movement, the dumbbell flies. It's a very good movement to do, but look at the range of motion I'm using. Uh, I'm, I'm preaching always to use a full range of motion on most exercises but you, when, when you look at me doing this exercise it's not full range of motion because the dumbbells aren't touching each other at the top. The reason why I'm doing that is to keep the tension on the muscle. If I would go all the way up, the tension will be on the joints, mainly the elbow joints and the wrists and not the chest. And that's what you want to remember when you're doing a dumbbell fly. If you do a cable fly or a peg deck fly, nothing like that will happen because you will have constant tension throughout the entire range of motion. And when you do a dumbbell fly, if you go all the way up, you can literally hold the dumbbells there uh, infinity because there's no tension on the muscle, there's tension on the bones, on the tendons, the ligaments, and not the muscle. That's not what you want. So what you want to do is you stop short of losing the tension so you can kind of get used to this movement and you can know when the tension would get lost. So for me, that's about this point. If you can look at my chest right there, you can see it contracting at the very top. And then once I feel that the tension will be lost, if I would go further, I go back down again. And this exercise is more important to really get a good stretch than getting a good contraction here. Because we already did all the exercises to get really a lot of blood in the muscle to really get a good pump. And what you want to do now is really stretch the chest to stretch those muscle fibers. And the bigger, the better the pump is, the better the stretch will be and the easier it will be to feel the stretch as well. So if you're doing a fly movement and you're not really connecting to the chest, try adding the fly movement at the very end of a chest workout when your chest is warmed up, when it's fully pumped up and then do the movement and you will feel a lot better. You will literally feel the chest fibers stretching out, allowing for them to grow instead of being stagnant over time. What you should also look out for is you shouldn't go too heavy with these because some people go way too heavy and then kind of turn it into a press and it actually can injure your biceps or your front delts if you go way too heavy and you're not controlling the weight. So never go too heavy. That's why I like to stick to a rep range at least around 12 to 50 reps, never around eight reps or so on isolation movements. For me, that will be a no-go. And for a bodybuilder, it's important to keep your muscles very full and your joints minimally impacted. And now it's time for the triceps. After chest, I like to hit the triceps. I'm very soon going to make uh, a video regarding to my workout split, but I train the triceps twice in my split, one time on a separate arm day and one time after chest. On the arm day, the triceps uh, get even more exercises, three to four exercises, but during chest, they get two exercises. And one of them is always 
that hits the long head of the tricep, such as this dumbbell score crusher. And another is to really get a lot of blood in there to make sure I leave the gym with a pump in those triceps. And even though we already did a lot of exercises to warm up the triceps with uh, indirectly with the chest exercises, I still like to start out quite light on a, especially a dumbbell score crusher like this. Um, because the elbows are very sensitive to tendonitis if you keep doing this exercise very heavily right at the start without warming up. And uh, because we already did quite a lot of exercises such as the chest dip and also that incline hoist press, the chest press, pretty close grip, the uh, triceps were already quite fatigued even before doing an exercise like this. So the weights I'm using here aren't really comparable to what I do at my own gym when I'm still more fresh. Obviously, whenever you go to a different gym, you always want to try out different exercises, but you always, even though when you're trying out exercises you've never really done, make sure that you feel the muscle that you want to feel. But you never can really hit the same weight in another gym when you're doing different exercises compared to your own sweet gym that you're going to at your hometown. And for me, that is the same case. I'm used to a specific kind of dumbbell, I'm used to a specific kind of exercise order and the speed of which I'm uh, progressing the work and I'm obviously um, well, not obviously, but a lot of people are training here and they wanted to talk or take a picture or something. So the workout took a little over two hours instead of one hour and 20 minutes that usually would have took me to finish a workout like this. And what we're doing here is the rope push down. Now this is the exercise I was talking about that really fills up the triceps. It really gets a good mind muscle connection going and also it's very easy to contract the triceps to its fullest. So for people who have trouble, uh, you know, using the triceps in movements, this rope push down will be an excellent addition to any tricep work that you do. And here you can very easily see that there are changes in the tricep, how it moves as I'm doing the rep. When I'm going upwards, you can see that the tricep is stretching out. And when I'm going down, you can see it contracting. And that's what you really want to feel. If you go upwards and you don't feel any stretch at all, you have to monitor and you know assess your form and see if it's correct. Because what I like to do is keep my arms just a little bit forward, allowing me to stretch out that long head of the tricep, which is attached to your shoulder joint. And that allows you to really stretch that part of the tricep even better. And when going downwards, the uh, triceps are straight again, the upper arms are straight again, allowing you to fully contract the entire tricep as well. Even though you might want to focus on the long head of the tricep here, uh, it's not really possible to do that without dominating this movement with the small head of the tricep, which is what this movement is ultimately going to target more. If you really want to hit that long head, which is the biggest part of the triceps, you want to do an overhead extension. But because I'm only doing two exercises here, what I like to do is first do an exercise that hits the primary part that I want to have grow in my triceps, which is the long head. When I finish that exercise, I like to finish it off with something else that fills the triceps with blood and really finish them off. And that's why I'm also doing a drop set here. And now I'm keeping my hands close together so I'm able to go even further past failure, allowing me to finish this workout with a very good pump. Anyway guys, I really want to thank you for watching, a lot more content is going, and this video was still filmed in the old video camera, because this is uh, an footage from like two weeks ago, so almost all footage that's coming now will be filmed with a new and improved 4K camera. I really want to thank you for the support, because your support allows me to invest in a channel like this and produce better content, and if you have any video ideas let me know down in the comments however i do have a big list on my phone right now that has a lot of videos in there a lot of ideas already 30 to 40 titles already written down which will be all going to the channel vintage genetics all right guys don't forget to stay golden